Engine DJ, I love you, but you're a hot mess. All right, so it is early 2024 at time of recording this, and I'm hoping somebody at Engine watches this video because I love your products, right? The Mixstream Pro, I sold a fairly high-end uh, Pioneer slash Serato system to downgrade to the Mixstream Pro, and I've never looked back. It feels great to use. It does everything I need. Engine lighting is brilliant, and you are supporting your platform really well, right? If you've paid attention to some of the updates that Engine's had, they've done some major bug fixes, they've added some major improvements, things like Echo Out and like the touch effects, and they added a bunch of effects to some of the, the bigger boy controllers out there. So when I go to invest in my next major controller purchase, I'm probably going to stick with these guys. But your desktop software is the weakest link in your entire ecosystem. And it's to the point where I can understand why people use other, <laughs> other softwares to prep a USB drive rather than dealing with this mess. So let's talk about this mess. We've got engine going here. Now I've got it in the two deck mode, top and bottom here. First weird quirk that I have been experiencing as of late is the scrolling on here. This seems nitpicky, but I kid you not, it's just the worst. If I do a slight scroll, two finger scroll, right, cut back to me, that's all I did. And it's just pages and pages and I can't catch it, right? So what I mean by that, is if I go over here, I got digital DJ tips loaded up and I scroll and I want it to stop scrolling. I just touch the touchpad again and it stops, right? That's how my browsers work. That's how everything else seems to work. But for some reason, wait, there's more. Uh, for some reason, doesn't work that way in here. So if I'm trying to scroll through my library and I want to just check out like one song below and I just do the tiniest little It's just nuts. Now it's a bit better with a scroll wheel. So when I hook up, you know, I got a little USB mouse here that I pretty much have to use every time I use this software. It works a little better. But should it be working a little better or should it be working? <laughs> okay. So I don't know what it is. Now it could be my system. I checked my mouse settings. I couldn't find anything that would adjust that because I have my scroll speeds all the way down to zero, scroll a few lines instead of page, like that kind of thing. So I don't know if that is a me thing or if that is an engine thing, but it's a problem. I'm gonna get these keys out of my pocket. They gotta hang out there with my guitar. Oh, keeps pulling my sweater down. Hey, okay, so that's my first big gripe. Now, there are others. Do, 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 do. Script. Uh, now, one other that you may notice if I scroll back up here. One of the other problems you might notice is right here, the sea of red. Now, I made the mistake once, and I will never make this mistake again, of downloading a bunch of songs off of BPM Supreme directly into my download folder. And I had a gig that night, so I just quickly scanned my download folder for songs, got that put onto my engine library and carried on with life. And then once I fixed everything around and got it into a separate folder where I can keep track of things a lot better and it's not getting lost and any other downloads on this particular computer because I use this thing for work, they're all now glowing red. Now, they exist in other spots on this computer, and they exist in my collection, but for some reason, when I use their cleanup tool, it does nothing. So if you click over here, there's like nothing going on here. We've got 
our audio settings, playback settings, and then library. Nothing to scroll up or down. Th this is it. Now there is a library optimization, uh, optimization, and it does a cleanup, and it won't get rid of any of those red tracks. So I have a few hundred tracks I have to go through and have to delete. Uh, thankfully, I caught this before I did a major increase in my library, because recently I did uh, about 3,000 country songs, because <laughs> BPM Supreme had a big sale thing going on, on uh, like a three-month thing, and I wanted to bolster just everything. So I downloaded... Uh, So now that that cleanup is done, nothing. Those reds are all still there. They all exist in other places. They are the same BPM, the same key, the same name, same timeline, same waveforms, but it won't clean them up at all. So I don't know what it's actually cleaning up. I don't know what this library cleanup thing does, but it does not get rid of tracks that don't exist in their original file location, even if you have an exact duplicate elsewhere. Uh, that would be a nice thing to do of like, give us a secondary function there of, you know, eliminate doubles and things like that. Or, um, and, and again, like have it be fairly sophisticated where like this, this thing can read the waveforms. It can tell that they're the same song. Yes, sometimes you'll have the same song under more than one name and more than one location with different files and blah, blah, blah. So have it ask when that comes up and things like that, right? This library management is a big pain in the butt. Now, on top of that, actually adding songs to the library is way harder than it should be. If I have them in my iTunes library, it's way easier to deal with. So if I actually go and I scan all my music on my computer in iTunes and then open up Engine DJ and just say, hey, double check that I have any new songs under iTunes, it'll do that. But because I can't, for some reason, under the library on here, just add a file folder for it to check every time, right? All it has is iTunes library location and then these other things. I can't actually set my engine specific one, I think. There might be a way to do this, but that gets to my other gripe with the engine software. There's no manuals that I can find anywhere in the software. Like I can go and I can find some tutorials on their YouTube channel and stuff. I'm pretty sure if I go to the engine website, maybe there's some. So we're here on the engine website. Support. Frequently asked questions, smart list, other frequent, right? All of this stuff here is on the website. That is nice. But none of it is located in the software at all, including any hotkey bindings or anything like that, right? Give me something along those lines in here. Uh, virtual DJ and, oh, there was another one I used recently. I think it was Dejuiced. Uh, they seem to do this really well, where they have a lot of their tutorials and stuff linked directly in the software. I don't need a full-on manual in the software, but resources, not a career, right? Issues and problems, tutorials, optimization, updates and releases, profiles, walkthrough. I don't. I don't see just the straight-up manual anywhere in here. Um, optimization, updates and release, frequently asked questions, right? A, a lot of these little quirky things that I'm seeing, if there is a fix, I'm not finding it. I'm pretty good with recording software, right? I've got like three or four different DAWs sitting on my computer for me to do some uh, testing and reviews on. Um, and I can navigate through those. And if you've ever dealt with old, <laughs> DAWs especially. This should be child's play compared to it, but there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't seem to be wanting to do it. Okay, so other things. Right click 
doesn't seem to do a whole lot. Right? If I go to my rock here, I right click, reanalyze, reimport information, remove from collection, show and explore. And that's about it. If I go to my full on, oh, it's loading real slow today. That's nice to see. Like this, this computer has an i5, eight gigs of RAM, nothing crazy. I, I don't think it should be running this slow just because I'm doing a screen capture, but who knows? All right, California love, yay. Again, I've got two copies of it uh, because I moved them. Right click, yeah, still nothing in here. So if I wanna create a playlist, now, smart playlists, great idea. Smart playlists have actually worked really, really well. Um, yeah, other companies did it first. I don't care. It's a major improvement to have them in here. But if I want to create a new playlist, I go, I click new playlist, throws it all the way down here at the bottom, and I put here test, because that's what we're going to be doing today. And I want to add a song to it. So I have some smart playlists I put together here. Right? I got one that's anything in my library that's from the 90s. I just put it all in a smart playlist so that if I'm making a playlist, I don't have to go to particular blah, blah, blah. It, it's just really handy to do that. So I go in here, scrolling throws me really off. So I want to move this, oh yeah, into that playlist. I have to click and drag it. Now here's the other thing. If I hold this too long, it opens the playlist that I'm in. So let's say I want to go and find something from my collection. Let's search. Good old California love. All right, now I gotta scroll the way down here. Click, drag it into test. If I hold it too long, it'll bring it into test. When I exit the search, I'm still in that playlist, or in a test. So I go back, collection. Uh, let's see, there was like 50 other songs in California, so we'll just use that again. California Girls, cool. Right click. I, I can't add to a playlist with right click. I can't even put it up top. If I want to add it to one of these decks, I have to click and drag. Now, I think this is a leftover thing from uh, Mac users because they don't have right click. And I know Serato, which is most popular with Mac users or like it, it's most optimized for Mac, uh, Mac computers. Why don't I have a right click on my Windows platform though? Why is the right click so terrible? You have the right click able to do stuff, but it simply doesn't work well. Now, here's the other problem. If I go to move, so yeah, I have to move all around here. So I can, the solve, the fix, whatever, is I have to like move this to say there uh, for now. So now it's eh, and yeah, the scrolling just keeps doing its thing. So now I can move the stuff here. So I've got going back to Cali, cool. I click and I drag that into test. And if I miss slightly, it'll just create a brand new playlist all the way here at the bottom that has that song. So I can't right click to add a song to a playlist and I have to s manually pull it. This is all a little bit of a pain in the butt. Let me show you how Tidal does it. If I open up Tidal, create playlist, test, playlist successfully created. So I go here, oh, I love this album. Uh, by the way, if you haven't off the ground, this is just an amazing album. I wanna add this song, I right click, add to playlist, recent, test, click, it's now in there. I go home here and they've got like, oh, hey, country pop, because I've been playing a bunch of country weddings recently and they got the song Straight Line, I right click, add to playlist, test, done. That saves me a whole bunch of navigation time and is very, very easy. 
this navigation, this slight miss, and it creates a playlist, you, which you still have to click and drag. Th this whole situation is very annoying to use. Very easy to fix. Just give me right click, right? Uh, again, Serato doesn't let you use right click, I think, pretty much at all. I don't even think it does anything. Um, but Serato has, you know, keyboard shortcuts. Again, if you have keyboard shortcuts in your software, show me them. <laughs> in the settings here, give me, uh, if anybody out there who's a video gamer knows this, have a settings menu for your keyboard where you click on it and just shows what everything's bound to. Problem solved. And it just gets rid of a lot of this problem. Give me like a control click, add to last created playlist or something like that. Or like uh, if you do uh, hold click and hit the A button or something like that, right? There's a bunch of ways that you can solve this weird problem. So what can engine do to solve my gripes that I think are probably out there for a lot of people? Um, weird quirks and stuff like the, the scrolling, like I said, that could be me and they are getting up on the bug fix side of things. So I think they're probably okay with some of that stuff as long as they know it's happening but scrolling issues like if you're a user and you have that problem let them know if they don't know people are having that problem how are they going to fix it um, but i have a few ideas idea number one give me a useful right click or a hot key on my keyboard that causes the equivalent of a right click for you apple users out there Right, give me those type of shortcuts rather than having to click and drag everything around. Uh, that clicking and dragging stuff, it really, really slows down the workflow and creates a bunch of other problems, especially if you're using a trackpad because they're just not as accurate as a mouse, right? So giving us a proper usable right click menu can solve a lot of this, or hotkeys, can solve a lot of this click and drag nonsense that is really slowing your workflow down. Uh, now, number two, uh, as I mentioned, give us hotkeys, period, and then have those hotkeys listed in a manual in the software. Nice and easy, easy to do. If you don't want to have the manual in the software itself, have a digital manual with a link to it, right? I see this on a lot of pieces of software where in the help menu, there'll be like a manual button and it just is basically uh, opens up your browser of choice and brings you to the manual page. Sucks if you're using it in offline uh, or it sucks if you're using it offline, but I could live with that over whatever uh, is going on here where I have to go and search through frequently asked questions and watch tutorial videos and stuff just to figure out that something doesn't work the way, in my opinion, it should. Um, and especially when it comes to these playlist creations. Make file <laughs> management easier, right? Have, I don't know what it is, maybe I'm missing something, but not having a folder that I can just say, hey, this is where my music library is. Scan it every time you open up. I, I have that in my settings somewhere. I can do that through some of the wonky sides of this interface, right? But when I click this and I go to my download, my new downloads folder, this thing just takes forever to load, right? I have a few, I know I've got, a few thousand tracks in here and you can see it ticking up slowly at the bottom 100 109 100. there's a major lack of optimization here i i don't know i'm not a coder i i don't program software maybe i'm missing something about how hard this could be to use but there's got to be a fix here for this to make it easier to manage my files in your software where i can just if I've added new songs to a folder that they just show up the next time I open of like, hey, do you want to rescan your library? And I can click yes. On the top of that, make the sync out recognize that. I've had on more than one occasion where I've added songs 
and I thought I've scanned them through here and I do my sync and I do all my things and then they're just not on the SD card in the end. I don't know why. And if I knew why, I'd be able to fix this myself. But because of the jankiness of not having just a dedicated, yeah, like if you have it in this folder, it gets added to your library. Maybe there's an engine library folder somewhere in the computer, but I don't see that on this at all, right? I mean, maybe it's because it's trying to scan my music, but when I go into my music here, oh, there is an engine library. Oh, and right now all it has is my uh, presets for title and stuff. Okay, well, that's really annoying. Now, not last, but certainly not least, give us stems. Now, that is easier said than done, I'm aware, right? The potato computer that is inside of a... Mixstream Pro cannot do real-time stem analysis, and if it could, I don't really want to hear those stems. Those probably aren't going to sound very good. But you've got industry partners. You're working pretty well with guys like Virtual DJ. Here, take this advice. Go talk to them. This solves all your problems. Virtual DJ has a stem folder for pre-scanned stems for people who like myself, aren't using a very powerful computer for DJing, so they can scan the stems ahead of time, pre-process it, takes up more hard drive space, but then the stems are there. Talk to Virtual DJ. This, they don't have to give you their industry secret of how they're splitting all the stems apart and stuff like that. Like, they don't have to give you their algorithm, but let get them to let you use that stems folder to power your engine DJ stems in your hardware. And honestly, Virtual DJ will probably go for it because let's face it, if somebody wants real-time stem analysis, they've got to go buy Virtual DJ and use a laptop with it. If they really love the stems, like that's basically a huge billboard ad for, yeah, isn't this stuff cool? You want to do this in real time? Go buy Virtual DJ. Saves you guys a ton of programming time, a ton of updates. All you have to do is make it that your engine OS can handle those layered. Usually it's like four, basically four MP3s playing at the same time, which I'm pretty sure even the potato you have in your computer can handle. And there you go. You add a pad mode or you have the EQ takes over controlling those if you're on a stem song, like you have a little button on the, or button on the touchscreen to switch. There you go. You know, hard drives, cheap these days, right? Uh, same thing with SD cards, right? I can get a 256 gig SD card that will be nice and stable for under 30 bucks. Right now I'm using a 128 because my library I export in is like 60 gigs. We can handle the extra space on our SD cards and stuff. And that will save you a bunch of time and it'll catch you instantly up with all of your competition. In fact, you'll probably surpass a lot of them because the only one right now who I think may have better stems is DJ. That's that's about it, right? Uh, Serato, uh, Rekordbox, the old DJ stuff, uh, the stems 1.0 from Virtual DJ, all that stuff, none of it compares really well to Virtual DJ's 2.0 stems that can be done out of real time, and then you can upload it in, problem solved. Now, last but very much not least, again, standalone software, guys. Now, that might put a wrench in what I just talked about, but you already have a... Oh, uh, you already have a desktop software that people can set cue points on, that people can you know, organize their music however badly currently. If you add MIDI control to the software you already have, now you're out in the industry. Uh, right now, there are a lot of question marks as to what's gonna happen with Serato going forward. Their industry partners don't know exactly what's going to be going on. I mean, sure, there's a lot of backdoor discussions. But, yeah, who knows what's happening with the Newmark stuff, 
right? So they're probably going to stick to, you know, Serato DJ Lite and whatnot. But Rain products, are they going to have Serato DJ Pro unlocked still? Who knows? I mean, the old hardware, yeah, because they're not, I mean, even Alpha Theta is not going to give everyone who bought Serato uh, products previously the middle finger. But going forward, they may say, no, uh, these Rain products have to find their own software to work with. Like, there is a possibility of that. So get ahead of that, right? If, if you if you take all of the things that work so well about engine OS and you put it into your engine DJ desktop software, you'll be pretty caught up to everybody else. Yeah, you'll be falling behind on stems and you might not be able to do that virtual DJ workaround I mentioned, but you'll be pretty caught up. But overall, yeah, like, like I said, I'm a big fan of Engine OS. It's the Engine DJ desktop software that is horrible. It's missing a bunch of features that could easily be added. It's janky. It, it, the scrolling issue is just really weird, but that could be me. But yeah, clicking and dragging for everything is a super slow way to do any of this stuff. And I can only imagine trying to do this with like a touch screen because if you're slightly off, all of a sudden it makes a new playlist, but that new playlist is down here at the bottom and it opens that playlist. So you don't have the one that you were looking through. So if you're using smart playlist to organize and then create playlists of your own, it's issues inside of issues. So I think this is all solvable. I, I think it is fairly easy fixes to solve 99